In today's episode at Builder Nation, we are featuring Sport AI, a company that is at the forefront of sports technology. Sport AI uses advanced AI and machine learning to provide data-driven insights into sports techniques, helping coaches, athletes, and broadcasters optimize performance and training. Their software offers a powerful tool set for improving technique and making expert-level analysis accessible to all. Let's see how Sport AI is changing the future of sports through technology. Today, we are joined by Lauren Pedersen, CEO and founder at Sport AI. Welcome, Lauren. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on the show. Perfect. Well, uh, first of all, I want to talk about your background. Uh, you studied marketing and some years ago, I saw that you had a master's degree in management. Then you work in different companies at the marketing department. So what inspired uh, the founding of Sport AI, AI some months ago? I know that you also play competitive tennis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I grew up in New Zealand uh, and I played a lot of sport. Uh, I was like into basketball and netball and uh, I was a black belt at Taekwondo when I was 13. So I was really that sport kid. Uh, but tennis was the sport I really, really got into. So I um, ended up obviously playing a lot of tournaments and training and took a tennis scholarship to play NCAA Division I college tennis in the US wow. for American University. Go Eagles. Uh, <laughs> and I was there for, for four years in DC and then Uh, there I was studying yeah, marketing, communications and graphic design uh, and then I uh, ended up taking my first job was in um, a large advertising agency in New York and I uh, worked there for a couple of years and moved over to London also working within advertising agencies um, and when I had along this journey I met my lovely Norwegian husband and we decided to move over to Oslo in Norway and when I came over to Oslo Uh, it didn't really make sense to continue working in advertising because everything was really focused on the Norwegian market. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started really working with Norwegian or Nordic founded tech companies that wanted to grow internationally uh, because then it was more of an advantage to have me on the team uh, with experience on and growing growing companies uh, abroad. So I have been doing that for the last 16 years. Um, I love working within uh, tech and and building up these these companies. I've uh, had a, a, a number of different, um, yeah, a number of different roles and worked in a number of different kind of tech companies. But Sport AI is the first time I've been able to kind of combine my passion for sports with my uh, experience in, in building and growing tech companies. So for me, this is uh, the perfect match. Well, it's amazing. And, and was your idea or how this idea came uh, or for, from who maybe someone tell you? Uh, no, it was really, we, we are a group of co-founders actually. So. Uh, there was only really five of us that kind of came together and I don't think there's like um, yeah one place that the idea came from but some of our, our group were um, uh, really into sports some were into kind of the commercial business side uh, all had been working within kind of technology before um, and we came within uh, from from different approaches but we saw um, we saw that there was an opportunity to bring Uh, kind of objectivity to sports technique analysis uh, and to be able to offer this into businesses um, using AI. So really taking the advantages of all the sort of development and, and new that's happened within AI and, and look at how we, can, um, how we can tune that towards sports and specifically into technique analysis, which has been quite subjective until today. Yeah, that, that's true. And now that you are talking that you are uh, like you have other co-founders, Um, I want to stick with this because I watched an interview you gave uh, like three years ago where you were talking about making a team and you said that the most important is to have the same goals but at the same time have the different uh, specializations. No? At that moment you were talking about marketing but I think that it can work for every work team. So what is your vision about uh, that now that, it, that with the team that you have in Sport AI? Yeah, I think it's uh, a great point actually. In a Yeah, our um, our founding team is definitely an example of that, where we are uh, a very diverse group with different opinions and different strengths. But we uh, we shared this vision of um, using the the power of AI technology to enable you know uh, 
objective and scalable sports technique analysis and be able to deliver this to the the really the massive global sports industry to be able to offer this kind of as a b2b platform so that you know whether you're um a training platform or a broadcaster or a group of coaches or you know sports equipment brands that they can get access to this kind of data uh, so we all kind of um, believed in that vision and then uh, obviously some of us bring in more uh, commercial expertise and some bring in more sporting expertise and some bring in more technical expertise but it's that combination um, that really makes us I, I think a, a dream team yeah it's perfect because you have like different visions be, uh, from different fields you know so I think that that's perfect and that's what makes a work team uh, like a dream team yes Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm, 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 I agree with you. And now talking about the sport AI uh, platform and technology, how this technology adapt to different sports, uh, each with unique movement and strategies, how is possible that? Hmm. So we are really focusing on using, I mean, using AI, but AI is such a broad term, right? So what we really mean is that we're using computer vision, machine learning and biometric analysis to understand what makes good technique. And how we do that is that we can compare, for example, my forehand in tennis mm -hmm. to thousands of other players or to one player that I really want to emulate. Maybe I really want to have a forehand like Kasper Ruud, who's the best uh, Norwegian player today. Uh -huh. uh, and we can give immediate feedback on how I could change my technique to be more like that gold standard or that person I want to emulate. Uh, and this kind of analysis um, is is really possible now because of the advancements within AI and particularly within the, the strength of computer vision. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've focused on uh, racket sports first, so tennis and, and, and paddle, uh, because of our backgrounds and knowledge and network within these sports. But we have uh, the ambition to expand the platform to work with many, many sports, because if you think about Uh, technique in sports, the same kind of comparison on technique or body movement could be the same for a free throw in basketball or in baseball or in cricket. Um, yeah. All have kind of isolated techniques that people want to practice and want to improve. Uh, and this, uh, the platform, the, the software now can really start to isolate and see how technique can be uh, improved and changed to, to, to become better. So that's, that's really the, the ambition. Yeah, and that, and that's uh, I think that is really helpful too because you don't need to. I mean, of course, if you want to be like a professional and and competitive, you you have to train with a coach and everything. But it also helps uh, the coach if you have a coach or if you don't have, but you want to, as you said, simulate uh, or imitate the the movements of another player. You can do it by yourself. Like just with that is is really helpful too. Exactly. I mean, I, you know, today, if you have a tennis lesson in many places around the world, it will easily cost, say, a hundred US dollars. And you might have a good coach, um, but it'll be like a one to one lesson where you're on the court. Um, but if you had three or four good coaches all looking at your technique, they would all give different variations of feedback to me as the player on what I should be changing based on their understanding their training, their background, yeah. uh, and there's no data to back it up today. You never get data to, to show on, on what you should be doing to change your technique. And this is such a huge opportunity, right? So we see that this can be a fantastic tool to be able to back up uh, what the coaches are telling players. So for coaches to be able to show the player and, and be able to follow their progress, um, this is we see this as an incredible tool. Uh, and also to be able to scale their services Um, to, to a much broader scale. So they don't have to just be charging for that one hour that they're on court, but they're able to follow up with evaluated services and data uh, evaluations and, and video analysis, um, you know, throughout the day to, to many more players. So we really see it as a, as a fantastic tool that we hope that coaches will, will take on and embrace. Yeah, that's true. I, I watch a video how this works, like all the data, the percentages that appears just for one movement. I saw the uh, video that you upload on LinkedIn, uh, like watching Zendaya in the movie, like uh, uh, like analyzing yes. <laughs> that <laughs> was amazing. I, I really loved it. And I was like, oh, it, it's crazy that just like seeing one movement, you can have all the percentages, like the the arm is like this, the, the legs and the body should be like uh, different. Like it's crazy how it, it works. I, I, I really enjoyed that video, but 
I, I, with that, I understood how this works exactly because they have like different points of the on the body to just analyze every movement. Yeah, and it's really, you know, this kind of technology has come a, a long way, but and yet it's almost just started, right? Because it used to be that to track body movement, you had to have physical sensors on the body. Uh, and then you had to kind of walk around or train with, you know, with wearables or with, with, with physical sensors. But what we see is that, you know, when it comes to video, you can almost use like every pixel of the video mm -hmm. uh, as a sort of sensor that can be used as a comparison to others who are who are uh, playing or, or doing the same technique as you are. Um, and this enables us to do these really immediate comparisons and to be able to give kind of valuable database feedback to, to players or coaches or into this broadcasting world. You can imagine that you're watching, you know, the US Open is coming up uh, or, or Wimbledon and you can do kind of immediate comparisons on how people are serving. How is Federer versus Nadal or, you know, Sviatek versus Williams? You know, these are kind of uh, really, I think, engaging experiences for fans as well. Yeah, that's true. I, I really, uh, I think that it's really not just for, of course, to see uh, as a player, but also for the people that is going to watch. It's really interesting to know, like, like the difference. Like, maybe they do something they shouldn't do. Like, it, it's it's crazy. And and I want to ask also, um, this is sports AI analytics and performance data uh, can play a role in injury prevention and recovery for the athletes or not. Yeah, we see that you know having having good technique is is also critical to try to avoid injuries or to make sure that you um, yeah you don't end up in that situation where you get kind of repetitive injuries, which is which is common in sports. Uh, so we definitely see that this technology has a huge uh, role to play within uh, injury prevention and recovery. Um, our focus initially has been on really performance side, so looking at how players can can become better or. Uh, how this data and analysis can be used by different businesses to either recommend the right equipment, maybe the right tennis rackets, or how you can engage fans or, or become a better player. Um, but uh, when the time is right, I think it's going to be a, a great tool to also use in this this injury prevention uh, area. So, um, you know, whether there are partners who see that opportunity to use it um, into their businesses, they should definitely reach out and get in touch too. Yeah, because it, it shows you what are you doing wrong, where you, you can improve. So maybe you are doing doing something that is going to hurt your knees, your arms. So I think that could be a, a really good um, tool to improve this uh, also the to, to prevent uh, the the injuries and uh, and make a recovery easier and faster, I think. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely see that there are so many possibilities for this technology. Um, when you place it into that technique uh, context, so uh, so yeah, it's um, it's a it's an exciting future that we have, I think. Yeah, for sure. And this is for AI technology can be used um, to improve team dynamics as well as individual performance. I know that now it's focused on tennis, paddle, but you can you think that is is possible to analyze also team dynamics. Yeah, so uh, the technology can definitely like track different players, whether they're on a court or a field. Uh, for us, as I said, we're sort of really focused first into racket sports, but we see the opportunity not only going into natural cases like golf or cricket or softball, uh, but into other kind of team sports. And there, um, you know, you can we, we can track like how players move together. We can track like maybe how far they're running, where they're, you know, sort of tech, more tactical elements and statistics. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a possibility with this technology to, to go in that direction as well. Oh, that, that's perfect. And I I saw on the website uh, many like uh, things that you have there. Uh, and I saw that about the broadcast uh, the opportunity that they have. So can you explain us more about the how Sport AI integrates with existing broadcast platforms to deliver the seamless AI enhanced commentary. Yeah, so we see that there's um, there's an interest from the broadcast segment to be able to do these kind of uh, live or replay comparisons of, of players. So, you know, looking at their technique, either how a 
a player's technique has developed over time uh, or how they compare with each other or maybe even get some of the audience to be able to you know send in the videos of themselves and find out how their technique compares to the pros so this kind of this kind of uh, opportunity we think is can be really really fun and, and engaging and a game changer when it comes to the broadcast to sports side um, we from a product perspective we offer uh, a way for, for our customers to be able to log in, to be able to get access to APIs. So to be able to deliver the analysis uh, through the APIs means that we can be integrated easily into kind of sites or apps or into broadcast. And of course, this is something that we are developing further and further all the time. So we're really interested in in speaking with kind of progressive broadcasters or streamers who are interested in being able to use this technology and finding the best use cases for them and how they can integrate it into the, to their products and services. Yeah, that's crazy because I think that now uh, with this, uh, the broadcasters can do uh, more because as you said in, in the blog on the website, the comments sometimes are subjective, are limited. And for a person that is watching, Like maybe I, I have an opinion, but I trust in what they say on TV. But now with uh, Ispore AI, we are sure that all the data is accurate because it's sources from the elite players. Yeah, and I think it's also, it's not really even about, uh, you know, not being able to trust the commentators, because I think it, what we can do is we can be a great tool for the commentators to kind of arm them with more data and insights for them to kind of integrate into their commentary. Uh, okay. So it can give them some extra tips and extra ideas on what to be talking about to, to fill that time in a really engaging way. So uh, we really hope it's, um, yeah, it's a tool that the commentators themselves will really uh, embrace too, to make their jobs a little a little easier sometimes. Yeah, and, they, and give more uh, detailed uh, stuff about the, the match, about the, the movements, about the technique. I think that is, also helpful for them to that yeah 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 absolutely we we really think that there's there's a cool way to integrate this uh, as you see with you know a lot of data and statistics and maybe ball tracking and heat maps and things that are that are out there today that this technique analysis can really be a a, a new element that can be brought in yeah totally and sometimes also something i that i also check on the website is was the sport ai can help Uh, sport brands and retailers to sell their products in an easy way and personalized to the customer. Tell us how this works. Yeah, so today uh, it's really difficult in many cases for uh, consumers to understand which type of sports equipment to buy. To buy. And I'll, I'll give the tennis example now. So many people don't know which tennis racket would be the right kind of tennis racket for them to buy. Uh, there are many different weights and head sizes and string tensions and things um, that can be really confusing for the average player who's not really, really, really into the, mm -hmm. the details. So, uh, and on the other side of the spectrum, it's really difficult for a lot of the, you know, sports brands or racket brands to get data on the player or to see the players or learn about them to be able to recommend the right rackets on the other side, right? So we see that there's a huge, great opportunity to be able to bridge that gap using kind of video to be able to you know match up a player's style or technique or their level of play with sensible racket recommendations uh, for different brands and we see that this could easily be kind of integrated either into apps or websites uh, or kind of any digital platform experience either from the the racket brands themselves or uh, retailers who want to kind of increase conversion rates, increase engagement from the audiences and make sure that they're they're uh, enabling kind of a, a good buying experience. Yeah. And when I when I saw this and I was like, oh, yeah, that this is this is crazy because uh, it's something that I never thought that could be to could be real, like could happen. And now with the Sport AI, it's possible and it's like totally crazy to have this opportunity that you just upload a video and they just with that, they recommend uh, what you need, what you have to do. And I think also it's helpful for the brands and the retailers, not just for the sales, also to see customer behavior, the trends, uh, etc. So they can stay competitive in the sports market too. Yeah, and I think, you know, the brands also Uh, might be able to use this data in within their product development process as well to get more and more data and understanding of how, yeah, how real people play, how how much data there is around different types 
lots of techniques and different styles and different kind of groupings within the customer base. So uh, we think there's, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of use cases for the for the brands and retailers themselves to really embrace this t- technology. And we're really trying to make the, our, the Sport AI platform um, easy to integrate and easy to get access to this data, no matter what use case you're looking for. Yeah, I think that is a, as you said, it's a good opportunity for the brands and also for the customers to to have this experience, to have um, this personalized uh, uh, moment just to pick a racket uh, or uh, some element that they need because some of them probably are not the ones that knows every detail of every racket and and sometimes you need help or you just so a review on internet you say like oh i don't know if i should i buy it because i don't know if for me it works maybe for the other it works but i don't know for me so i think it's a great opportunity also yeah. for the for the customers and now that we are talking about many um uh, features that sport ai have uh, what challenge you and your team face developing this sport ai platform I mean, for us, we are uh, we're we're building the technology now, and it's such a new, new technology, which is so exciting. Uh, and for us, we want to be able to work with really kind of progressive businesses that are in the sports industry who want to kind of embrace the power of AI uh, and be part of this journey with us. So we are really out there on the market trying to speak to some of the the larger brand names, the guys who are in that kind of either. The, the racket or sports equipment producers, the retailers, the broadcasters, and these kind of training platforms and teams, these kind of guys who we think can get some of this, some real value out of this type of technology. We're out there trying to find out which ones really want to uh, start embracing it early and be be the game changers in the market. So, um, so any of those brands out there who want to find out more about Sport AI and how we can deliver technique analysis, uh, they should they should reach out to us because uh, yeah. we, we're ready. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, as I told you, I was uh, like when I was checking the website, when I was checking your LinkedIn, the Sport AI LinkedIn, I was like, this is crazy. And you are just have uh, Sport AI just have like some months uh, that is uh, that is a uh, launch out there. So I think that is crazy that everything that is happening uh, with the AI and uh, also with the sports field, because as we saw some weeks ago, we had the Olympics. So uh, the, the sport is everywhere. Like uh, we have the World Cup, we have many things, and I think the uh, sports uh, m- really make people get together. Uh, really, something that is helping also uh, the kids uh, nowadays because they are like just sometimes in front of a TV or in front of a mobile phone. So I think that also uh, this kind of stuff uh, can help uh, people, kids, teenagers, uh, many people to see like, oh, I want to try this. I want to to do this sport. I want to to be able to perform as Nadal, as Federer, yeah, you yeah. know? So I think that this is really like probably empowering for some people. Absolutely. And, you know, really we've, we've said that our, our mission all along has been really to democratize access to sports technique analysis, uh, which has often been really reserved for the, the top players in the world and people only had um, yeah, more money and resources to get access to the best coaches and the best um, analysis. You know, if you if you think about a, a pro tennis player, the top pros they would have maybe a team of people who are working for them, who and some of which can be top kind of performance analysts who can be going through on every match and tagging them uh, and doing that analysis for the players. Most people in the world don't have access to that, right? So we see the opportunity with this type of technology to open up access. So whether you are um, a little kid in New Zealand who's got a dream of playing in, in Wimbledon or you're, uh, you know, uh, a rising golfer or basketballer, no matter where in the world you are, that you should be able to get access to the sports technique analysis um, from either your local club or brand or, or, or a training app or platform um, that can help you understand what you can do to, to be better. Yeah, that's true. I think that when you see this is is possible, you feel able to do whatever you want. If you want to try a new sport, if you want to become professional, you have the opportunities, not just like a like a far dream or super um, difficult to achieve. You are able to do it with just with just this. With uh, you don't need uh, to pay for many coaches to pay for many things that are also super expensive so i think that is really helpful for everybody out there it's like you said uh, you are you are letting people um, 
achieve their their dreams with this we think it's a, we think it's a, a great tool that can kind of um, you know even out that access to sports data and there's there's no question we don't we don't believe that this technology will replace coaches uh, we think it's a great tool for those coaches but it opens up access to this data which really uh, very few people in the world have had before so we, we think it can be a great uh, a great addition to the lineup yeah that's perfect and now that we were talking about challenges uh, I think that uh, in today's business, it's also important to talk about this challenge. But what are the most significant uh, ones that you are probably facing now or your team in the procurement process? And how do you keep the supply chain uh, resilient? Uh, it's not something that I've had the most focus on so far because we are a very uh, young company. Uh, uh, as you said, although we've been a lot of our team have been focusing on developing this technology for for a number of years actually the company itself was only founded last year mm -hmm. uh, so we've been doing like really fast iterations and trying to get the technology out there at the same time as kind of building the commercial pipeline uh, but as we grow of course being able to scale uh, sustainably is going to be taking into all counts of, of the business so uh, for us, it's uh, as as this early tech startup, we've got to be like out there. We've got to be talking to people. We're going to be embracing it and building the technology, knowing which types of um, you know sports and opportunities we should take on next, uh, and then having an eye on how we can make sure that uh, we're running a, a really stable and sustainable growth business as well. Yeah, the, I, I think that you you have the time to start to focus in on that because now you are growing the company and everything. Yeah, that's totally true. And well, we, we were talking at the beginning, like um, now it's focusing on tennis, uh, paddle, golf, but uh, what plans does uh, Sport AI have for the future? Maybe some upcoming news. We, we will see Sport AI for other sports too, as you mentioned that is you are visualizing th this, but maybe you have like an upcoming new. Yeah, so so now we're into to racket sports, so, so tennis and paddle and uh, for us, uh, we are looking at who could be great strategic partners that could take us into the next sport. So, uh, you know, whether that would be golf or, you know, baseball or cricket, or there's a number of different opportunities. But what we want to do is find those kind of really progressive partners who would be interested in working with us to adapt the technology and be the first out there into those other sports as well. So. Um, that's kind of how I think we will will probably take the leap when we go into the next sports. And at the moment, we're really focused on on these racket sports, which we see as a, a huge market opportunity in itself. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure that the sport AI will be uh, in some in the near future. We'll will like just cover all the sports and everything because, as I told you, I think it's a, a platform that it really helps uh, the the athletes to to see how they can improve their their game so i think that soon they are going you are going to to cover many other sports i think yeah that's and, that's the ambition is to be able to take this technology and scale across a, a wide range of uh sports so it's relevant across the sports industry yeah that's true and well to finish with this interview uh what is the best advice you can give for other entrepreneurs that are starting now with this journey to make a company to create something new i mean for me i now get to work with something that i'm personally really passionate about uh which is sports and, and particularly at the moment coming into racket sports where you know i spend my weekends and evenings playing a lot of tennis uh, and watching a lot of these sports and to be able to combine my passion and knowledge for sports with my career background which is growing tech companies for me this is like the dream right and it also means that i'm super effective uh, and can can add a lot to to our business so finding that match where you have uh yeah you have a lot of value and background and history and passion uh that can really can really help you grow your business and go a long way yeah and some also as you said uh, you for you now it's a dream so you have to find for other entrepreneurs what moves you to to do things yeah. what you really like what you really enjoy what you really feel like i want to start my day because i know that i'm going to do what i like absolutely yeah. you got to find something that's the right match for you and uh, for me sport ai is a is a fantastic match 
Yeah, I, I see and I, I really hope that Spore AI keep growing and growing and growing for the next years. I'm sure that it will be like that. So thanks so much, Lauren, for being here and share all your valuable talks with us. It was so good to hear your ideas and learn from you and learn from Spore AI how this works. So where we can find you and Spore AI, any social media handles or website you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely. Try and find us on, on LinkedIn, uh, Sport AI, and um, yeah, connect with me as well, Lauren Peterson. Okay, so and for everybody that is watching, be sure to visit our website, BuilderNation.io. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn by following Builder Nation for the latest updates and exclusive content. Thank you all for being part of this amazing community. We will see you in the next episode and a special thanks again to Lauren for joining us today. Thank you.